Hello, my viewers. A good friend of mine told me that he was going to clean his evaporator coil, so I came running on over with my camera to video the action. So, roll them. Okay, Willie's going to pull the evaporator coil out of the coil box right now. We're going to take it outside for a good cleaning. One thing you want to make sure of is not to tip the evaporator coil around when you do so, because otherwise you're going to get water all over the place. Alright, let's take a look at the inside of this evaporator coil. This is on the return side where all the air comes in. Okay, and then around this way is the supply side. You can tell a difference that the supply side looks to be a lot cleaner than inside here in the return side. Now this is actually after 15 years of basic neglect. Now, first of all, Willie's going to go ahead and hose the coil down with some water. This will allow the coil cleaner to actually activate because water is what activates the coil cleaner. Alright, now it's been hosed off and we can at least put some coil cleaner in there. The coil cleaner that Willie's going to be using for this job is a universal coil cleaner it's called Triple and it's made by Diversitech. Now Willie's going to put the coil cleaner on the, on the fins and take note he's using gloves. This is not something that you want to do with your bare hands. This coil cleaner comes in a very handy pump spray bottle, so it's uh, easy to use. And when it's empty, you can still use the hand pump sprayer for something else. Nothing like recycling. Now we'll let the coil cleaner sit for a while, and uh, so that it'll have a chance to loosen up any grime and and grease, whatever it might be. A problem in there. Okay, now Willie's gonna hose off the uh, coils now. First, you're gonna just start at the inside. And even though some of you viewers out there are gonna argue about hosing from the inside out, okay, that well, this is the way he's doing it anyway, and, and it works for me as well. Now you see how this stuff really foams up. You, you know you got to make sure that you get all of the coil cleaner out of there, all of it. You got to keep keep rinsing until you you don't get any more suds at all anymore. Now Willie is rinsing off the supply side of the coil so that we can have both sides as sparkling clean as possible. And you continue to rinse for a very long time because that coil cleaner just lingers in there. I mean, you don't want any, you do not want your water to suds up at all. Not at all. Okay, so you see we're still getting some suds coming out, so we have to continue to rinse. As you see, more crud is coming out of the pan as he rinses. 
All right, you know, while you're cleaning your coils, you can always make sure that there aren't any problems that you could run into later on, like your capillaries here could rub or something like that. You want to make sure they're not touching anything. Otherwise, you, you could it could develop a leak. And also right here on your tubing, like right here, this part here we need to address because this could turn into a leak one of these days. Okay, now that's all cleaned up. It's a lot better than it was. And it's ready to reinstall in coil box. So, see, here's what, what it looks like now. All nice and clean. Okay, here's the coil box right here. And it's a good idea if you clean your the, the inside of the coil box before you put the coil back in, which Willie's about to do now. Okay, now it's also a good idea to wipe down the inside of the coil box while you have the chance. Because once the coil goes back in inside the coil box, you're not going to be able to wipe it down as good. It's time to put the coil back in the coil box. need to get in any real hurry of doing that. Doing so, it's best to take your time, make sure you don't bend up any of the fins or anything like that while you're reinserting this coil. There you go. Good. Okay, now it's time to button up this uh, coil box.